In this lab, the front-end server is using a new TCP connection for each client to talk to the back-end server, which means we can't interfere with requests from other users and leak their responses as we have done in previous labs. But I'll show you how you can still use carriage return line feed injection in HTTP2 to leak internal authentication headers used between the front-end and back-end and combine that with a head request instead of a get request to turn a blind HTTP request smuggling attack into a non-blind attack and get access to the admin page that way. Let's get started. I'm on the homepage of the lab here, and the first thing you want to do is test for the CRLF vulnerability. So I'm going to switch to burp and go to proxy and HTTP history and grab the get slash request for the root endpoint, send it to repeater, and switch to repeater. I'm going to dock the inspector window here to the left to make it a bit easier to follow along. You want to make sure that you're using HTTP2 here. If you're not, you can go to request attributes here on the left and upgrade the protocol from HTTP 1.1 to HTTP 2. Next, we're going to try and inject headers with CRLF. So I'm going to go to request headers here. I'm going to click plus, and we're going to add a request header foo for a value of baz. Doesn't matter which values you pick. But then we're going to go back to the name field because this is where we're going to do our header injection. So we're going to say that this has a value of bar. And then I'm going to inject a carriage return line feed with shift enter, and then append the host header for a value of the one we have here in the request. So a correct host header. I'm just going to paste that and then hit enter, and then send this request. And we get back a 200. OK, so that's working. Now let's go back to that request or that request header we just added. And instead of the host header for a correct value, let's just change that to something else like evil.com, hit enter, send the request again. And now we get a 504 gateway timeout error. And we can see here that there's an error connecting to evil.com. So that confirms the CRLF vulnerability. Now let's exploit this to leak internal headers. And the blog actually has a search functionality. So if I go here and search for Yarno, we can see that our input is reflected back to us. And that's something we can use to leak those internal headers. And that's because if we inject a content length header in our post request to the search endpoint, followed by two carriage return line feeds, and then our search term still within the HTTP2 request headers, that means from the perspective of the front end, all of this, because HTTP2 is a binary format, is still part of the request headers, even though we've injected this double carriage return line feed. And the front end, if it has any internal headers that it's appending before sending on the request to the back end, it's just appending those after our HTTP2 request headers. But when the front end is rewriting the request to HTTP 1.1, it will actually interpret the double carriage return line feed here as a signal that the request headers from the HTTP 1.1 perspective have ended. And then this here is part of our request body in HTTP 1.1. So the request headers or the internal request headers are actually appended to our the search term that we're looking for here. So when the backend receives this, it's just going to send back a response in the form of couldn't find any results for the search term Yarno, followed by the internal request headers. So let's go back to Burp and try and exploit this. I'm going to go to proxy and HTTP history, and I'm going to grab the get request for the search term, in my case, Yarno, and send it to repeater, and switch to repeater. I'm going to dock the inspector window to the left, and then I'm going to right click and change the request method over to post, and then just send this request to make sure that we get back a 200 OK. We do. I'm also going to search for Yarno, so our search term, and we can see that reflected here in our response body. And I'm going to enable auto scroll to match when text changes. That makes it a bit easier as we work through this. You also want to make sure that you delete the request body here, and you want to delete the request header content length as well. Because remember, we're trying to inject this through the HTTP2 request headers. We don't want this in the request body. And I'm going to go to the request headers here and add one. So we're going to start our injection. So we're going to say foo for a value of bar, followed by shift enter carriage return line feed. And then we want to set a content length. And we're going to start with a low content length of 20 and increase it as, as we go along, followed by a double carriage return line feed. So from an HTTP 1.1 perspective, the request headers have ended here. And then in our request body, we want search equals, so request body parameter search. And then the value we want, in my case, is Yarno. And I'm going to hit Enter and then send this request. And you can already see here that we're leaking part of the request headers. So we're going to see the, the cookie header here. But let's go back. It's not enough. So let's increase this content length over to 100 and hit Send again. And we can see the SSL, so part of the MTLS headers that the front end is forwarding to the back end server, SSL verified. We don't see the common name yet. So let's increase this to 150, hit Enter, and send it. And actually, now we can see the common name null, and we can see the front end key. And it's the complete front end key, because we can see the content length uh, request header 
starting afterwards. So this uh, content length 150 is already enough. The only tip I have is like if you set it to something like 180 and you send it and you see that the response takes a long time to get back, that just means that your content length is set too high. So just cancel the request and, and work your way down again. So I'm going to change it back to 150, hit enter, send it again. So these are our leaked internal headers that we now have access to. And now I'm just going to go up here to tab 26, so this tab, and rename it to internal headers, just so we can refer back to it later and it's easy to find. And then if we go back to the lab, we can see this is the, the search page we had, but we're trying to gain access to the admin page. And the admin page is only available if you're logged in as an administrator. So now let's try and use those leaked internal headers to gain access to the admin page. And we can do that pretty easily by using the same trick we did before, where we append the HTTP2 request header foo for a value of bar, followed by two carriage return line feeds, followed by a smuggled request for the admin page using HTTP 1.1, using a correct host header, and then those MTLS-related request headers that we found in our previous attack. And the important thing here is that when the front-end server sees this double carriage return line feeds and rewrites the HTTP2 request to HTTP 1.1 request, it will actually be seen as the, the end of this get slash request for the front page and the start of the get slash admin page here. So these will be seen as two individual requests. The third thing is, is that you do want to make sure that you add a double carriage return line feed after the front end key here, because that will again indicate the end of this request and the start of a new one. This just ensures that whatever the front end adds to our HTTP2 request here is not going to interfere with our smuggled request here, because we don't want any of these headers to be added to our smuggled requests. Otherwise, that will cause issues. This will just be seen as a bit of leftover bytes on the backend buffer. And because it's not a valid HTTP 1.1 request, this will likely just be ignored or dropped. And then the backend server is going to respond to both of our requests. So it's going to execute both the get request for the front page and the get request for the admin page. It's going to respond to both of them. But what we're going to find is that the front end server is only going to read in or up to the 8,649 bytes of the front page. And it's not actually going to include the response to the admin page. And so this is a blind HTTP request smuggling attack, because while the second request here is executed, we won't be able to see it on the client side. So we'll have to find a way around that, and we'll use the head request trick there. So let's go back to burp and execute that attack. So I'm going to go to proxy and HTTP history and grab the get slash admin request here and send it to repeater and switch to repeater. I'm also going to dock the inspector window to the left again, and then go to request headers. So here in the path, we want to make sure that we change it back to slash, so the front page itself, because the request for the admin page, we're going to smuggle that in through our new request header. So I'm going to click plus here. And then our request header has a value of foo, or a name of foo for a value of bar, followed by two carriage return line feeds to indicate to HTTP 1.1 that first the request header foo bar has ended, and then that this entire request has ended. So we can start a new request here for the admin page using HTTP 1.1. And then another carriage return line feed. We're going to add a correct host header. So I'm just going to snag that host header here, copy it, and then paste it here. Then underneath, I'm going to set a new carriage return line feed to indicate the end of the host header. And then I'm going to go to the internal headers tab here and just copy these values and then paste them. And we want to modify them. So we want to say to the backend server, yep, we have been <laughs> verified by the front end server. So we flip this to one to true. And then the common name, instead of null, we want to switch that to our username. Likely, it'll be administrator, so let's go with that first. And then we leave the front end key as is, because that's just a secret that was agreed beforehand between the front end server and the back end server. And then for the value, we oh, actually, before we set the value, we want to make sure that we send a double carriage return line feed, the first one to indicate the end of the front end key header and then another carriage return line feed to indicate that this request has ended from a HTTP 1.1 perspective. And the value we set here is just baz, can be anything. But I'm going to go with baz here, and then send this request. And we get back a 200 OK. But as you can see, if I render the page, we're just going to get, or we're getting a response just for the front page. We're not actually seeing anything from the admin page. But we can actually work around this, because if I go to the lab just to copy the URL here, and then switch to the terminal and do a curl for not the admin page, but for the front page, a normal curl, like a get request, returns the entire response body. But if we were to pipe this through word count minus C, 
we get to see that there's an 8,649 character count, so 8,649 bytes of content length. So if we turn this get request into a head request and request the front page again, a head request actually won't include anything from the response body, but it will include all the response headers and it will tell you the content length that would be sent if you were to do a get request. So because a head request includes this content length, if we were to switch the request method for the front page from a get request to a head request, it might allow us to see up to 8,649 bytes of the admin page. And that would allow us to turn this blind attack into a non-blind attack. So I'm gonna switch back to burp. And then instead of a get request here for the front page, let's turn this to a head request, hit enter, and then send this request. And now we get a proxy error. So server error received only 3,608 bytes of the expected 8,649 bytes. So we know that that's the length of the front page. This is likely the length of the admin response that we're getting back. So the admin response is in total length smaller than the front page, and that's giving this error. So we need to actually, instead of the path here for the front page, we need to find a page that is actually smaller than 3,608 bytes to work around this error. So let's try and find a page that's smaller than 3,608 bytes. I'm gonna switch back to the terminal. Might be easy to do it here. And we'll do a curl request, so a head request again. Instead of the front page, let's pick the admin page, funnily enough. So this is an unauthenticated request for the admin page. And the content length we get back is 2,672. That's about a thousand bytes smaller than 3,600. So let's go back to burp. Uh, and then instead of the path here for the root for the front page, switch this to admin page and then hit send again. And we actually do get a response now. So we get the 401 unauthorized for this uh, original request, but then this is our smuggled request and we can see the response here. But if we go to the bottom, you can see we don't see enough of the response to get those links to the delete actions for the account Carlos or Wiener. So let's try and find another page that might be bigger than 2,600, but smaller than 3,600. So I'm gonna go back to the terminal and by the way, you can use a different method. You can just browse through all of the post IDs and check uh, for the content length there and see if one of them can be used. I found that in my case for my lab, if I looked at the login page, this was actually 3,247 bytes in length. So if I go back to burp, and then instead of the admin page, we request the login page, and then send this request. We get the smuggled response here. And if we go to the bottom, we actually get the delete links now. So I'm just going to grab the delete link for Carlos and then go back here to our request headers and open it up. And then instead of a get request for the admin page, I'm just going to do a get request to delete the user Carlos, apply changes, and then send this request. We get the same error again that we got before related to the length, but the backend server likely did execute our request. So we're it's again, it's a blind attack and that we're not able to see the response, but we can be pretty sure that the backend has executed our smuggled request because if we switch back to the lab and refresh the page, we can see, congratulations, you've solved the lab. And that's all there is to it. I hope this was helpful to you and thank you for watching.